Hey folks, so if you've done a gap analysis using MITRE ATT&CK and you've figured out exactly how it is that you want to strategize your security purchases and your deployments so that you can actually do a better job of detecting and preventing attacks using MITRE's ATT&CK, the next step is, is how do you validate that? You certainly don't want to wait until an adversary comes through and shows you where your gaps are. And so you probably want to have a testing methodology that you're able to leverage. There is a market around this, and there are some awesome options out there that offer great premium support, some uh, you know wonderful companies involved, and they are in what we call the breach and attack simulation market. Well, maybe you just want to get started, or maybe you're doing this educationally like myself. MITRE actually has their own tool that they release to help people get started, and it's called Caldera. So the Center for Threat Informed Defense at MITRE supports this, puts it together. It's an awesome open source project that really just installs a Python framework onto your Linux host or Mac or Windows or what have you. You can run it as a Docker container or as uh, something native to the operating system. I've even run it locally. Uh, but what it does is it actually helps you automate the delivery of a backend command and control network so that you're able to administer the tests and to deploy agents and do all of the things that you would expect an adversary to do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how we do that. And so this is this is the home page here. Lots of great information, not just on red team capabilities like adversary emulation and, and manual engagements, but even helping blue teams with autonomous incident response. So because of the instrumentation and that centralized collecting of, of data here, it's actually an ideal platform, not just to help with those, those blue teams, but also to help facilitate purple team exercises that combine red and blue and allow them to work side by side. So a really awesome capability that I encourage you all to take a look at. So what I'm doing here is I've actually, I'm gonna remove all agents, yep. And we're gonna start fresh. So I've logged in as a red team user that's kind of where the focus is of the sessions that I'm building for Cisco Live. Uh, but what's really cool here is, is that it's a very clean and easy to use interface. Uh, the configuration stuff, things that you're not typically going to interact with, except for when you're provisioning a system or maybe customizing it for your own needs. We've got a bunch of plugins that facilitate new abilities or help you visualize the data or even give you additional uh, additional, you know, fun stuff to work on. And then we've got the concepts of agents, abilities, adversaries, and operations. This is where the fun stuff is. This is where we get closest to the emulation piece of things and actually work things out here. So as we can see, I've got a very persistent domain controller agent that I was testing out to make sure it was going to connect to this head end here. But I'll show you how we go through and actually deploy a new agent on a Windows 10 host, just a standard user machine. Um, so very simply, I can go in, <clears throat> select the version of, of plugin that I wanna use. In my case, I'm just gonna use Sandcat, which tends to be favored for these things. And I'm gonna make sure that it knows that I'm going for Windows. Um, I'm gonna disguise it as if it was a, you know, simple data collector of sorts. And I'm gonna make sure it points back to my head end here, my my Caldera server, because this is the command and control head end of my instrumentation network. I don't have any extensions that I want to run. There's a lot of great insight into that. Um, but what I'm going to do is go through and whoop, and make sure that I copy just the uh, you know the core capability here. Yep. Here we go. Excuse the uh, the fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I can go in and uh, run it. This this one's already running. Uh, we'll give this one a, a go here. And uh, as, as you're going to see, it's going to wait a couple of minutes here as it's going through and executing the processes. And once it gets done with that, it's basically taking and piping data that it's receiving from my head end and creating a process, a, a daemon that is now running on this Windows 10 box that's going to report in to my head end. And so when I go back and look here, you can see that the Windows 10 device uh, was added to the red group. It's Windows platform. It kind of gives me an idea as to what's going on. Now, if I go in with Process Hacker, 
You're gonna see that that's the PID it's using. I can see I've got elevated privileges. I ran that as an admin. If you wanna run it as a standard user, by all means, do it. See what you're able to get away with because that in fact is a part of the process. Now that I've got the agents, I wanna figure out what it is I'm gonna test. So some of us might be tempted to say, well, hey, I, I just wanna test a few things, you know, and you can do that. You can certainly piece together, um, you know, testing. And this in, in this particular case has 459 abilities uh, out of the box, not too shabby, right? Um, but through other plugins, um, you know, quite a few of those like Atomic have added those things. So when we look, uh, you know, we can see that there's been somebody's gone through the effort of figuring out whether these are PowerShell or command line sorts of things, whether agents are needed, and you can see the scripts that are being run. So this is definitely a discovery script. Somebody's going through running Netstat, looking for some open, open connections. It's, it's a great way to get insight as to how people do things. And if I want to create my own ability, piece of cake. Well, maybe you're not so concerned with individual tests, but you want to emulate the bad people. And when you're looking to emulate an adversary, it's really adversaries come in with a, a shopping list of things they're going to do and a certain behavior uh, that they're inclined to use within your environment. And so if I look, you know, I've got APT29 comes with the EMU plugin, by the way. Um, I can go down and uh, in this particular case, I'm going to look at Carbonac. Pretty interesting stuff, um, a very complex threat actor. I can see when I expand this where the different, you know, focus areas are for them. They spend an awful lot of time doing discovery and collection. Um, they go after financials. That's kind of their thing, right? Your more sophisticated actors are going to spend a lot of time to the left of any execution. They're going to spend a lot of time doing homework so that they can ensure that they're getting very precise and focused um, footprints within environments so that they can get sustained um, and, and uh, persistent access because that really is, is where they wield the power and being able to sit there, wreak havoc, monitor connections, and, and slowly and covertly expand their capabilities. But you can see here that most of what Carbonac is after is, is using Windows-based exploits. You know, some of those are PowerShell or PowerShell Core. We got a few Linux things going on in case any of those happen to be looped into this process. And I can even see where things are going on where payloads might be used. So maybe I've got a prohibition against payloads. I just want to do discovery, but it's got to be payloadless, no problem. I can eliminate those steps from that particular adversary profile and I'm good to go. And again, if I want to change the order or anything like that, add an ability similar to the building blocks we saw before, piece of cake, you can do that. Um, now that I know, you know, how, how my adversary is actually built out, I'm going to actually go in and create an operation. And so for this, I'm going to call it BreakSec uh, 2227, because it's the name of my uh, 22, 2022 Cisco Live session here, or at least the call sign. And I'm going to make sure that we know that it's Carbonac. And I'm going to go in here and select Carbonac as my adversary. Now, fact sources are kind of like seed information, right? Those are things that we wanted to be able to uh, uh, to leverage so that it's coming in looking like you know the the you know the, they'd be prepared as as much as the real deal. And I can even go in and choose you know whether I'm running it against certain subsets or all groups in my agent profiles, right? I can decide whether I'm going to do something like base sixty four encoding. Maybe I've got too many detections that are dependent on plain text. This is a great way to check that. And I can choose how slow or how fast, <clears throat> and consequently, how covert or how overt these operations are within my environment. The quicker they run, and the noisier they are, and, and the more likely it is they're going to get picked up by some of those behavioral detection uh, mechanisms and heuristics that we have inside some of our tools. And so I'm going to go ahead, click this. It's going to run against all the hosts. And we're going to see very quickly it queues up the first set of commands. And these status sim, uh, lights will actually change as we go and give me a great heads up as to how far along we are. This sort of test, having run it in the past, is the kind of thing that if you're doing it on an environment of any size or complexity, can take over a day. Uh, but that's no surprise because adversarial groups, APTs like Carbonac, they take sometimes months 
Uh, they take their time. They, they're very patient and professional about this. And while we would like instant gratification as the defenders, they're not going to give it to us. Uh, so what's really cool here is it's going through. You can see we've got a success already. I've gotten a screen capture. This is the command that they use. You can see it's obfuscated with base 64. So my detection tool didn't pick it up. No surprise, I don't have any deployed. Uh, this is a test environment that I, that I put together here. Um, I can also see the, where the output is stored. So I can see that out of this, I got a host you know, file path here. Uh, you know, I dropped it into this particular place. And what's neat is that later on in the testing, I may decide to go and actually pull those files. So if I'm a red teamer or I'm somebody who's doing an internal red team and I want to show people the sorts of things I was able to harvest, this helps actually facilitate that. So it's a pretty neat capability here. And you can see at this point now we're deploying second stage, um, you know, root access toolkits, you know, again, more PowerShell executing uh, base 64 encoded stuff. If I want to eliminate that, I can go to plain text and see that my next commands after this stage are going to actually be delivered as plain text commands. Um, but we're not too concerned about, you know, the results of this particular test. I kind of want to show you what's going on. And so one of the cool parts we can do is, is we can follow this in real time. So I can go into the debrief mode here and I can see that I've got this one operation and I can see what the lay of the land is. My command and control server is currently talking to two agents. That's the attack path. More sophisticated tests, you may see pivots, you may see lateral movement. But I can also go through and see what steps are being followed. And this is drag and drop and like anything using graph stuff, it gets a little goofy. Um, but what's important to see here is, is I can see with the green stages, things that were, you know, satisfactory or, or that fully executed. And in the yellow stage, things that are either already in progress or, or ongoing. And if you see red, it's a failed step. Um, I can get it even deeper, show, you know, which tactics are being used. Right now, it's all about defense evasion and collection. And I can even see the techniques. And so as I lay this out, I can see, you know, modifying registry, doing some screen captures, um, you know, decoding or, or deobfuscating some files, pretty slick stuff. Now, if I really want to get into it and I get like a full operation that's run, I can even do something super cool, like download a PDF report. And it's going to take some of these graphs, but it's actually going to put it into a pretty management friendly, um, you know, consumable way here. And it also helps the other stakeholders. So while I can go through and I can see, you know, what was run and which agents were used, um, I can also see those graphs similar to what I showed you. And as you see, that sometimes they look pretty, sometimes they're just a little overwhelming. But what's really interesting here is, is that we can get into the fact graph. We can start learning about what sorts of information we were able to glean from an operation. This helps you understand what was exposed within your environment. We're also able to show everybody which tactics and techniques were executed. So if people want to know what the scope of the test was, we can show them that. We can also show them which commands were delivered. So you see some familiar ones here, you know, uh, actually doing a, a list process, you know, PSAX, doing a lot of really cool stuff here that is living off the land. And in, the, in this case, you can see we're doing a base 64 encoded sort of thing that's actually just uh, deploying that second stage rat. So there's a lot of really neat information here that shows you exactly how that was emulated. It's great for operational folks who need to automate something like this, would like to use this to augment third party red team testing or, or more involved and expert driven testing. But it's also awesome for folks like us. We're trying to figure this out and learn. So you can run it against some, you know, example environments. If you're evaluating some tools or new methodologies, you want to test playbooks, you want to see what the impact of some of your new detections are, this is a great tool to help you do that. Now, the last thing I want to show you as we're talking about Caldera is that you're not just limited to what happens within here. As you can probably imagine, you can build some capabilities uh, and, and, and manually cobble together an adversary, but you can also use something like Compass uh, to do that here. And what that does is it opens an instance of MITRE's Attack Navigator, should look super familiar, where you can create layers, do all the same stuff we talk about in the Attack Navigator tutorial. 
but you can also go through and for some of the built-in stuff or things that you developed here in Caldera, you can export them into MITRE. So maybe you kind of honed your craft inside of Caldera and decided, you know what, I want to push that out and show people what our test scenarios um, actually, actually covered. Um, maybe, you know, you want to go through and actually create an operation from something else. So if I've got something like, you know, APT38, I can go in and, um, you know, I can pull that up. And uh, let's see here. Oh. I can I can pull in you know aggregates. This one in particular is uh, Carbonac, Cobalt, and and Fin Seven, all financial adversaries. Um, let's see if I got uh, APT thirty eight here. Oh, we got Deep Panda. We'll try them out. So if I want to bring in Deep Panda, you can see that it's got you know a certain set of techniques um, that they're deploying. It's going to bring them in and it's going to create an operation for me and so now when i go in i'm able to go in and i should have uh, it's going to be under the operations create an op adversary deep panda there we go so if i want to run a new operation which can run in parallel to the carbonac one i'm already running i've just imported something that may not have been included as part of the default data set or the e emulation plugin emu as it's called, but it lets me go through and import that and, and do all of that. So pretty cool. Hope this was useful. And I hope that you folks find Caldera helpful in actually advancing your security posture and learning about how it is your adversaries might be coming at you and what you can do to defend against it. Thanks very much and have a great day.